Well, if you're wondering what that is, uh, Delhiites, on the 29th of October, you will be seeing this CESSNA-206 aircraft flying above the skies, attempting an ambitious pollution control experiment. The technique being attempted is called cloud seeding, which will be done with the help of IIT Kanpur, and the test flight has already been conducted. Cloud seeding is a concept that was first thought of way back in the 1940s. The man on your screens shortly is Vincent Schaefer, who along with Irvin Langmuir discovered cloud seeding in principle on in July 1946. By investigating the production of particles of various sizes and their behavior in the atmosphere, they discovered that tiny particles could be used to produce ice. They were then able to nucleate the ice by introducing small particles in a lab-made cloud in a freezer with dry ice to create snow. Vonnegut later discovered that silver iodide was an even more effective at generating ice formations, which was a breakthrough discovery for operational cloud seeding. The first cloud seeding experiment called Project Cirrus happened in 1947. A modified B-17 bomber dropped dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide, into a stratus cumulus cloud. This experiment proved successful when they witnessed a racetrack form in the cloud deck where the plane had seeded. This was evidence that ice was produced and that the cloud physics and precipitation could be altered. But what is cloud seeding and how does it work? It was developed as a technique to simulate clouds into forming droplets. Cloud seeding works by putting small particles called condensation nuclei into an already existing cloud. Silver iodide works for cloud seeding because its crystal structure is very similar to that of ice. So it tricks water droplets in the clouds into freezing. These newly formed ice crystals then grow heavy and fall as rain or snow. But will cloud seeding work? That is not a guarantee in itself. Firstly, it is important to understand that cloud seeding cannot create clouds. A cloud cover must be present. Since microphysics in itself is complex, not all clouds will produce rain. As per previous studies, about one in four cumulus clouds are successful and this is also not guaranteed. The Indian Meteorological Department has predicted cloudy skies over Delhi on the 28th, 29th and 30th of October. The Delhi Environment Minister was given a demo on how this will work. Listen in. Uh, this is a flare rack. This is a flare rack. This is a flare rack. This is one on the left side and the other on the right side. And this we mount flares. This is electric. yes, electrically connected. Hai. And electrically connected under a controller. So, if we select left side, select karna, left and manage number three, select karna, hum controller go left three karenge, and we will fire karenge. So, it is flare burn karega, or burn karenge, and we particles granules. Hai. But, viewers, the problem is that every single flight of cloud seeding will cost as much as rupees 60 lakh and above. This cannot be a sustainable option for several reasons. The first one being that pollution in Delhi is not itself limited to simply Delhi anymore, but all of North India. Secondly, moisture is something that is very crucial for cloud seeding. For most of the highly polluted cooler months, the atmosphere is too dry and stable to support significant rainfall. Thirdly, on an average, cloud seeding only increases precipitation by 4%. While generally considered low risk in small doses, repeated use can accumulate in soil and water bodies. Beyond this, environmental risks also persist. There is a question of accountability. If cloud seeding coincides with intense rainfall that leads to flooding, causing damage to infrastructure, crops and livelihoods or loss of life, who really will be responsible? And the real problem, as we have told you before, is in this satellite image of North India. What we're showing you on your screens, those red dots, are in fact fires. Not all of them will be farm fires. But over the years, NewsX has learned that most of these red dots are in fact farm fires because they appear like clockwork every year around the same time. They begin in the month of October and will continue until mid-December.
and it is going on as of now as the image shows you as well and they continue to increase day by day. Quick fixes like cloud seeding might be the best case scenario and they might provide relief but it's certainly not a long-term solution. Delhi's pollution problem needs much more than artificial rain. That's the big question that we take forward with Mr. Anand Sharma, President of the Indian Meteorological Society and former ADG of IMD as well. Mr. Sharma, thank you so much for speaking with NewsX. I have to begin by understanding from your perspective, what do you make of this cloud seeding experiment? I think first thing is that, first and foremost, cloud seeding and artificial rain is a scientific challenge, which we have not fully resolved it, we have not fully understood it. So experiments are going on since 1970s. And in 71, I think for four consecutive years in December, these kind of experiments were done. But not much uh, of uh, static, statistically significant results. And after that, you know, India Med Department and IITM which is our sister organizations, we, we used to do those experiments and they, uh, later on, with not, I should say again, a very encouraging results and these kind of experiments were discontinued and in recent years, some states have done like Karnataka, Maharashtra and even Tamil Nadu when they faced um, drought-like conditions or prolonged dry spells. But again, the results there also were not very, uh, I mean, I should say very encouraging. Um, Sometimes they claim that in one year, particular year, the, I mean, they could enhance the rain by 17 to 18%. But question comes, you know, like, was it because of their experiment or was it because of natural reasons? Because now also, they, I think the Delhi government is trying to do this kind of experiment and they're saying that we will 27 to 29 there's a possibility yes india med department has said there is a western disturbance uh, which is likely to affect northwest india and there is a possibility of naturally clouds and light drizzle and rain from 27 to 29 over delhi region so the question comes now i mean is it going to be like they are going to see those clouds which develop at that period. Will the rain, suppose if rain happens, will it be because of this experiment or is it because of natural reason? That is okay. one issue. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, Mr. Sharma, I, I also yeah. want to understand from you, as far as this particular experiment is concerned, how much time does it truly take once the flight has taken off and the cloud seeding, let's assume, um, as far as the scientists are concerned, has been successful? How much time does this truly take for it to turn into rain and for a particular area to actually receive the benefit of rain? It depends. It, again, it depends on the weather conditions. You know, like, I mean, normally they say, you know, there should be well-formed clouds and favorable winds. I mean, it should not be too, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, high winds are against, I mean, they will take the clouds away. So the right kind of moisture condition should be there, high humidity should be there, cloud should be there, then you do the cloud seeding. So depending on the, I mean, the current weather situation when the cloud seeding is done, so it could happen in the maybe next 48, I mean, sorry, next uh, half an hour or so also. But then it depends from condition to condition. And in temperate countries where you have cold clouds, it has a different behavior. In India, in tropical country, we have warm clouds. So again, the behavior is different. In some temperate countries, they have tried and they have got results, better results. But then these kind of things are in experimental stage in India. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Mr. Sharma, where exactly has have these experiments then been performed and where have they been successful? I'm sure we're uh, taking uh, some guidance uh, from other such experiments across the world. See, I said, you know, like there are reports of uh, being done in US, even in China, they claim. So again, you know, th these are the issues. But they say they, they have some kind of, I mean, expertise in this. And then you have Dubai has been claiming that they have been doing, but of course they have a different kind of process altogether. They don't use silver iodide or 
other uh, chlorides for this kind of process. They have a different kind of process. And so come, some countries are, I mean, claiming, but at the same time, we have to remember here, you know, you, you, you are trying to interfere with the natural processes. Yes. Right, one. Second here is, is there's a question also here. Suppose there is a rain because of your experiment. Okay, so tomorrow Haryana might say or UP might say, look, these clouds were coming towards us and you have, I mean, seeded these clouds and you got the rains and we lost it. Otherwise, we would have got those rains. So that, that, that's, that's called law of thought. This has happened in the US. A particular, I mean, resort over where nearby the government did the experiments and there was rain. They claimed there was rain and the government claimed it was because of their experiment. So the people who had visited that resort, they left immediately because it was raining. So the, the owner of the resort, he sued the government, saying that, you know, because of your experiment, I lost business. So this is law of thoughts. So this is, again, we have to be very, very careful. Already we have some issues regarding the water sharing by the rivers in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, other places. This could add to another issue. One. Second thing is we have to have a control experiments along with it to prove that, yes, this was a region where we had not seeded the clouds and this is a place where we have seeded the clouds. And it has to be a significant increase in rainfall, at least 20 percent. Then only you will say if there is no significant amount of rain, then I mean, or, and it should be statistically significant. So these kind of things we have to ensure and then only we will be able to see and now this government is saying that IIT Kanpu says they have the technology let us see I mean what happens they are trying okay Mr. Sharma before I let you go one last quick question sir what uh, can be uh, a negative cost of this uh, interference as you've also pointed out with natural processes see one thing is sometimes you know like uh, sometimes people try to do hail suppression or maybe seeding. So either it could be, if there is lots of moisture available, it could lead to, I mean, if, it, it depends on the situation. If, if the environment has lots of moisture and ideal condition under those you do, it could lead to, uh, I mean, very heavy rains and it could lead to flooding also somewhere. You know, that, that's a possibility. The second thing is depends what kind of chemicals you are using. Like silver iodide, it, it, it's not, it's a very safe, it's not a so safe chemical. So one has to be very careful in choosing a chemical, which kind of chemical you are using. Otherwise, it will have a repercussion. It will ultimately go to your ecosystem and then through, um, I mean, like it will harm somewhere. So we have to be very careful. So due diligence has to be taken care what kind of chemicals are doing so that we mitigate the, I mean, any wrong effects are there. And as I told, it's a very challenging task. Research is still going on. And I, I would say, we are waiting for the significantly, I mean, results, significant results, which prove that, yes, it works. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Sharma, thank you so much for joining us on NewsX with that perspective. We leave it there and submit to a very short break.